Hey folks, got another viewer request for you in today's Wrath of Math lesson. Erish Khan commented, Hey Sean, kindly make a video on proper and improper subgraphs. Also wants to see one on isomorphic graphs, which we will get to hopefully later this week. Interestingly, after hundreds and hundreds of comments on this channel, I think that's the first one to address me by my name. I used to always introduce myself at the beginning of the lessons, but no one ever used my name, so I stopped bothering. But you are more than welcome to address me by my name. Let's talk about proper and improper subgraphs. Before we get into the details, let me just super quickly answer the question. Given a graph G, a proper subgraph of G is a subgraph of G that isn't equal to G. Otherwise, we call it an improper subgraph. It's very similar to the idea of proper and improper subsets. So let's start off by talking about proper and improper subsets, and then the definition of proper and improper subgraphs, that's basically based on the idea for sets. So we'll start with sets, and then we'll easily extend it to proper subgraphs. So say we've got this set S containing the elements 0, 1, and 2, one of my favorite sets. We could say, of course, that S is a subset of itself because every element in S is in S. However, S is equal to S. So S is an improper subset of itself. A proper subset of S would be a subset of S that isn't equal to S. For example, the set containing 0 and 1. This is a subset of S, but it's also not equal to S, so we would call it a proper subset of S. And you might wonder, how do we denote that? Is there a special symbol? This, of course, is the general subset relation symbol that you'll usually see. So if we have two sets A and B, and we write that A is a subset of B, like that, that just means that A is a subset of B. A might be a proper subset, might be an improper subset, all we know is that it is a subset. Now, the symbol is very analogous to the less than or equal to symbol. We could write that 1 is less than or equal to 3, but since we know 1 is less than 3, we could get rid of that line that allows for equality and just write that 1 is less than 3. We can do the same thing with the subset relation. We could just drop this line that allows for equality and then what remains is this symbol. So this means that this set is a proper subset of S. It's a subset of S that isn't equal to S since S has 2 and this set does not. However, as is often the case, should point out that this notation is not universal. I just got a textbook in the mail that actually uses this symbol where I would usually use this one. And then to denote a proper subset, this textbook uses this symbol. They throw the line back in, but then they cross it off. <laughs> so that's the symbol this, this other text I've read uses to denote a proper subset whereas they just use that symbol to denote the general subset relation. For the sake of this lesson, we're going to use this symbol to denote the general subset and subgraph relation, and this symbol to denote the proper subset and proper subgraph relation. So that's it. The idea for sets, it's the same idea for graphs. A subset of S, a, or excuse me, a proper subset of S, is a subset of S not equal to S. Same idea for subgraphs. So let's just erase all this set stuff and start talking about graphs. So say we've got a graph G that has a vertex set V and edge set E. And then say we've got this subgraph of G called H that has vertex set V prime and edge set E prime. Then we would say that H is a proper subgraph of G if H is not equal to G, which means that either the vertex set of H is a proper subset of G's vertex set, or the edge set of H is a proper subset of G's edge set, or of course, both of these conditions could be fulfilled. So for H to be a proper subgraph of G just means that H is a subgraph of G and G has some vertices or some edges or some vertices and edges that its proper subgraph H 
does not have. So let's actually get into some action and see some examples with some actual graphs. So here we've got two graphs, G and H. As you might be able to tell, we could say in this situation that H is a subgraph of G. However, upon closer examination, you may be able to confirm that H is also equal to G. So H is what we would call an improper subgraph of G. H is not a proper subgraph of G because it is equal to G. However, we could change the example by changing our graph H. Let's say we get rid of that vertex W. Then, in this situation, H is a subgraph of G, but furthermore, H is a proper subgraph of G. In this case, the vertex set of H is a proper subset of the vertex set of G. G has this extra vertex W that H doesn't have. So H is a subgraph of G that's not equal to G, Thus, by definition, it's a proper subgraph of G. We could look at a slightly different situation if we add that vertex W back in and then get rid of the edge joining U and V. In this case, again, H is a subgraph of G and the edge set of H is a proper subset of the edge set of G since G has this edge UV which H does not. So H again is a proper subgraph of G. It's a subgraph of G that is an equal to G. That's all there is to it. And then we could look at this other example if we get rid of that vertex W again. Now we see the vertex set of H is a proper subset of the vertex set of G. G's got W, H does not and the edge set of H is a proper subset of the edge set of G. G has the edge UV, H does not. So again, H is a proper subgraph, subgraph of G. That's all there is to it. A proper subgraph is just a subgraph that isn't equal to the graph that it's a subgraph of. Say we wanted to get a little wacky to see some more counterexamples. Suppose that H had this vertex X then H is not a proper subgraph of G and it's not even a improper subgraph of G because H has this vertex that is not in G. Could we say that G is a subgraph of H then in this case? No, we couldn't say that either because G has this edge that is not contained in H. But if we add the edge from U to V and we add the edge W back into our graph H, then we could say that G is a subgraph of H. Furthermore, G is a proper subgraph of H because H has this extra vertex that G does not. And that's all there is to it. So given a graph G and a subgraph H of G, if H is equal to G, we say that H is an improper subgraph of G. If H is not equal to G, which means that G has some vertices or some edges or some vertices and edges that aren't in its subgraph H, that means that H is a proper subgraph of G. So hopefully this video helped you understand proper and improper subgraphs. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or need anything clarified or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. And be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. This lesson took way too many takes. Unbelievable amount of takes. It's always the easiest lessons that you think are just going to be bang. You One take and you're done. And it takes you a week. Unbelievable, man. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Links to his music in the description. The situation's how you make